Good evening, dearies. I'm here to read a little excerpt of Harry Potter. I've got my wand here, my trusty little wand to help me video cast this live. And um, we're in luck because I have a special guest for you all. So right over here, and my wand's gonna blend in because it's black and he's black. Um, this is Seamus, and he's going to play the role of Albus Dumbledore in tonight's reading from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I know I'm gonna, you know, mix it up, you know, tomorrow night it'll be the seventh and this fourth and third and so on, you know. <clears throat> so let's begin, shall we? Yes. Good afternoon, Harry, said Dumbledore. Harry said at him, then he remembered. Sir, the stone. It was Crow. He's got the stone, sir, quick. Calm yourself, dear boy. You are a little behind the times, said Dumbledore. Crow does not have the stone. Then who does, sir? I, I... Please, Harry, relax, or Madame Pomfrey will have me thrown out. Harry swallowed and looked around him. He realized he must be in the hospital way. He was lying in a bed with white linen sheets, and next to him was a table piled high with what looked like half the candy shop. Tokens from your friends and admirers, said Dumbledore, beaming. What happened down in the dungeons between you and Professor Crow is a complete secret. So naturally, the whole school knows. I believe your friends, Mr. Fred and George Weasley, were responsible for trying to send you a toilet seat. No doubt they thought it would amuse you. Madame Pomfrey, however, felt it might be very hy hygienic and confiscated it. How long have I been in here? Three days. Mr. Ronald Weasley and Miss Granger will be most relieved you have come round. They have been extremely worried. But, sir, the stone! I see you are not to be distracted. Very well. The stone. Professor Quill did not manage to take it from you. I arrived in time to prevent that, although you were doing very well on your own, I must say. You got that? You got Hermione's owl? We must have crossed in midair. No sooner had I reached London than it became clear to me that the place I should be was the one I had just left. I was just in time to pull Quirrell off you. It was you. I feared I might be too late. You nearly were. I couldn't have kept him off the stone much longer. Not the stone, boy. You, the effort involved nearly killed you. For one terrible moment there, I was afraid it happened. As for the stone, it had been destroyed. Destroyed? said Harry bleakly. But your friend, Nicholas Flamel. How do you know about Nicholas? said Dumbledore, sounding quite delighted. You did do the thing properly, didn't you? Well, Nicholas and I had a little chat and agreed it's all for the best. But that means he and his wife will die, won't they? They have enough elixir stored to set their affairs in order, and then, yes, they will die. Dumbledore smiled with a look of amazement on Harry's face. To one as young as you, I'm sure it seems incredible, but to Nicholas and Coronel, it really is like going to bed after a very, very long day. After all, to the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. You know the stone was really not such a wonderful thing, as much money and life as you could want. The two things most human beings would choose above all. The trouble is, humans do have a knack of choosing precisely those things that are worse for them. Harry lay there, lost for words. Dumbledore hummed a little and smiled at the ceiling.